everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the July 2018 update. This is so exciting. This is a big month. And why is this a big month? It's big because Mars is going into retrograde. And I think this is going to be a really interesting time. I'm not anticipating anything too crazy uh, and I'll explain why <laughs> we'll go we'll have a look at the last month we'll have a look as well at what's coming up this month but I always think it's good to see what happened last month because last month we had Mars conjunct Ketu and it's good to see how that is going to progress we're going to have let's have a little look here let me bring up a chart. Let's bring up Donald Trump's chart actually because I was looking at him earlier and and I know I said I wouldn't look at uh, people who are still ticking along but I mean I think it's okay to just have a sneaky peek and it's not like I'm putting this on not putting his chart on the screen or anything like that so I think it's okay. Now we're just gonna have a little look Mars is in okay so I'm recording this on the 28th of June and yeah Mars is in retrograde it's just gone into retrograde uh, as of June 25th 26 boom he's in retrograde okay so Mars is in retrograde and if we have a look at because one of the things I didn't look at in my research was how long have we had Mars in the same house as Ketu and we're looking at the time since about May all right, so May, June, July, August, these months are all going to share a similar flavor. Okay, they're all going to be, they're going to have a bit of a theme. Well, I mean, gosh, right, right up until uh, November, really, early, early, early in November. So they're both in the same house, and that is what I want to focus on for this big monthly overview. Now if you want to see a little mini reading for just your sign then you can click on part one or part two and there'll be a series of jump links and you'll be able to just click onto your bit and then watch your bit and carry on with your day. But if you'd like to see a bigger overview, if you'd like to see what's going on in the month for all signs, for the collective consciousness, this is the place to be. And the other thing is if you want to find out more what's going on with Mars, Ketu, this is also the place to be because I haven't covered Mars, Ketu or Rahu in your mini readings this time. I have touched on Saturn so I'm not going to do Saturn in the big reading this time. So let's take a look at the month's big overview, what's going on, so what are the main headlines. Uh, we've got Mars in retrograde as of June 26th and he'll be retrograde until August 26th where he then moves forward again. And as I've just noticed, he's going to be in Capricorn until say November 4th, 5th, you know, November 6th, we definitely know, okay, he's in Aquarius. So, so yeah, this is, there's quite a theme being drawn out here and we're going to explore some of those themes just after these headlines. So we've got new moon July 12th in Gemini and just to be sure everybody I'm using the sidereal Vedic astrology system. This is not Western. Uh, full moon July 27th in Capricorn and that's a total lunar eclipse. And by the way where I say July 12th in Gemini that is here in the UK. It might be the 13th in other places uh, but definitely for here it's it's July 12th. So if we have a look at what happened in June and I always think it's good to kind of do a bit of a recap as to what's been going on because that gives us the theme and the flavor for what it's like when Mars and Ketu are together. When they're together what's it like? What's going on? And what we noticed last month was that we had, I'm going to focus on three main events. There were so many news events that were going on. Uh, I know that, um, well, I believe the New Zealand Prime Minister has had a baby. So congratulations to all of New Zealand for being so advanced to, you know, 
um, to have women in strong leadership positions, as New Zealand has always done. I think this was something I wanted to look up, actually. I was thinking about this the other day. Wasn't Helen Clark? I think she was like an amazing uh, New Zealand. She was an amazing Prime Minister, right? Ages ago. Yeah, the 37th Prime Minister of New Zealand from 1999 to 2008. God, she had a good run. Amazing. I love New Zealand. And I love New Zealanders. I think that they are so evolved and advanced and, um, you know, innovative and so great at taking care of their Indigenous population, which is a bit unlike Australia. I, I think Australia could improve uh, on some of those things. And New Zealand just does it beautifully. But anyway, I digress. I'm always digressing. There were lots of things. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, there was the, the birth of uh, that prime minister's baby and um, I mean, millions of things. There's so much news, but I'm going to focus on three news topics of last month that I think really bring out the flavor of Ketu and Mars together. And so that would be, I am going to say the, the high profile suicides of uh, Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain. And that was the 5th and 8th of June, so that's really early June. We had Last month we also had um, an interesting thing happen. 12th of June, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un got together in Singapore and, uh, you know, they seem to make some progress in the world together, which is, which is interesting. And um, I've had a little look at the astrology of Donald Trump. I tried to find Kim Jong-un's chart. Unfortunately, there's no time for him. I would have loved to have had a look uh, at his chart. And then the other news topic I want to focus on that happened last month was the backlash on Alfie Days, um, which happened here in the UK. And that's like, you're probably thinking, what? She's featuring a vlogger? Yes, <laughs> because I'm on YouTube now. And, you know, for me, someone like Alfie Days is actually a big celebrity now. Whereas before, I think many years ago, when I used to watch TV, I used to kind of keep up with the TV things, but now I, I hardly watch TV. I mean, at most, sometimes I'll watch, there's an hour of this TV show that I sometimes watch, uh, and I'm too embarrassed to admit what TV show it is, because <laughs> it's pretty cheap and trashy. But I'm into the whole vlogging scene, and uh, you'll see this Alfie Days thing beautifully portrays the whole Mars K2 thing. I mean, it's that energy coming coming in a big way. So the Mars K2 thing, as we can see, that's been going on for a while. That's been going on since, now I said May, didn't I? I just want to double check that. Hang on. Oh, what have I done? May, we're going back in time on my little time machine. Yeah, May. I mean, so that we've got, we have a flavor of this happening in the, in the collective for a while. And I've been looking at news articles, news headlines, uh, all this kind of thing. And I'm seeing real themes emerge and last time I also mentioned the Me Too movement and I mentioned Jordan Peterson as well and I wonder if I bring up this little theme now or will that come across it probably will come across but it's okay to repeat it I think this is worth repeating Mars Ketu when I've seen that in charts right as a big overall theme when I've seen that in charts Mars Ketu conjunct I always say about those people and to those people that, oh, I wouldn't want to pick a fight with you, you know, because Ketu is kind of lifetimes, Mars is skilled in battle, right? So when I see it in a natal chart, I very often see someone who, who's probably quite good at being in a battle, being in an argument, they'll probably win. They probably also won't be roused to anger. Uh, because they know so much, because they're so skilled and it's an area of perfection for them, they might not need to pick a fight. You know, one of my um, bosses in advertising, he said that 99% of battles aren't worth fighting. Save your energy for the 1% that is worth fighting. And I tend to think that when I see that in a natal chart, Mars K2 people are skilled at combat and they know... Yes, we should go into this combat because we're probably going to win. Um, Mars Rahu people, on the other hand, and I have seen this in many charts. I've seen this in quite a few celebrity charts. In fact, uh, high-profile politicians and people who love to fight. 
Mars Rahu conjunct. Ooh, ooh, you know, that's the one that freaks me out, okay? I don't get too freaked out by um, Mars Ketu. I actually think that that's a better combination. Mars Rahu wants to pick a fight, whereas Mars Ketu, I think, they probably are reluctant to fight uh, and, and, and are skilled and there's lifetimes of knowledge and there's perfection going on and, you know, you don't want to do it. Um, so that's a big sort of theme that's going on there. Me Too movement that I mentioned last time, Jordan Peterson. I mean, look at that with women in the workplace. Women are quite justified in, in speaking up and saying what they're saying. And Me Too isn't just equal pay it's so much more it's 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 the abuse that women have copped it's I mean it's it's huge um you know it's minority groups who are in the right it's people who are just and have justice on their side and they're using that power to speak and and there's all that kind of thing going on uh and I think I'm gonna probably gonna touch on that in the next slide yeah where I talk about using your power um the power to be offended and, and things like that and victim power. I see a lot of that kind of thing going on. Let's have a look at these. Um, so I'm going to break it into three. We're going to have a look at the suicides that happened last time. Um, we're going to have a look at Donald Trump and we're going to have a look at this Alfie Day's backlash thing that went on. So with the suicides, okay, so what was happening there? I, I put a note here. This fits with Mars Ketu um, conjunction in Capricorn because we're talking spotlight. We're talking governing powers, world stage, people, high profile people on the world stage. Okay, through his past lifetimes, karma, people who feel invisible. It's the body without the head. You know, you're invisible. It's like, well, no matter how much I speak, no one listens to me. No one sees me. Uh, and I do think that that, that, can be, that can be a thread of the suicide dynamic. Uh, there's perfectionism, there's stagnancy, there's no future, there's no light, potentially. These are some potential ways of, of seeing the Ketu energy. Okay, what have we got here? We've got Mars, we've got beliefs. Do you fight for what you believe in? Purpose, meaning, career. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking of at this time when that was going on, I was thinking that these suicides have happened on the world scene as a bigger divine purpose in a weird sort of way that those suicides were in service somehow I mean this is a theory I've got in order to shine a spotlight on purpose meaning legacy career who are we what do we do um, is it fulfilling you know what are, what are we creating what are we doing um, do you fight for what you believe in you know and I think there was some could controversy around um, Bourdain's passing anyway I think that he was wanting to bring something to light and there are some theories about certain powers didn't want that stuff to come to light and yeah I mean look I don't know you know and, and perhaps there was a man who was fighting for what he believed in you know and, and in the end he gave his life possibly I don't know enough to comment on that but what I'm saying is that that happening on the world stage to me had a bit of a flavor of Mars Ketu energy and I think it's getting us to look at I just realized I didn't put my my lovely little Saturnian rings on it's getting us to look at um it's getting us to look at purpose and meaning and legacy and 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 um yeah what we're working towards you know who are we what do we believe in uh again I don't know too much about Kate Spade I, I read a couple of articles at the time but but somehow I do feel it may it may well have been connected and I think there are a couple of other astrologers who've, who've also said the same. I didn't look at their charts. I know you can look at their charts and make the moon first house and, and do all that kind of thing. I didn't end up having time to do that. But I feel like it's asking us to dig a bit deeper and it's asking us to think a bit more about purpose and meaning in our lives. I, I really do think 
that that's, that's kind of connected in there. The other thing I wanted to talk about was Donald Trump and what's going on in the States. I know that that's been a bit of a hot topic with astrologers. Uh, ever since Donald Trump got into power, he has been a fascination with commentators of all kinds, not just astrologers, but um, energy people and, I mean, the media, finance people, you name it, everybody's talking about Trump. So I thought, well, why don't I have a look at his chart? Why don't I get involved in a little bit of this? Um, so he did that peace deal in Singapore. Again, I think that's... Um, well, I think that's a good thing, uh, you know, and you, you kind of see the news and I, I, you never know what to believe anymore and I don't know. Um, I've got a note here that the concern out there is that people worry that Mars is going to turn retrograde and Donald Trump is going to go crazy. Okay, so I was interested in that question. I thought, let's have a look at this. Is, is he, is, are things going to kick off? Is he going to do something crazy? I had a look at his chart and that's why I brought up his chart. And Mars is actually in his third house from the moon. So personally, I think that's okay. I know that when Mars is third, sixth or 11th from someone's moon, Mars and the moon are happy and productive and work well together. So I actually think that it's going to be okay. And Mars is going to transition into his fourth from the moon early November and I'm pretty sure that's November 5th to 6th hang on um, let me bring that up 5th to 6th I'm pretty sure it's oh dear oh, gone September October November there we go so let's uh, bring up the 6th yeah I think it's the 6th um, so if and I mean that's going to be interesting I think if you're watching Trump and you're interested to see when he's going to do something rather unusual or whatever um whatever you might think you might do uh i mean that early time from kind of november 6 to november 13 mars is opposite his ascendant and natal mars that's going to be an interesting time i think that's going to be a time when i mean but i don't know again i'm not 100 percent sure uh but what, what i do think is that if something kicks off in this period in this next couple of months Let's not blame Mars because I don't think it's going to be Mars. It might more likely be Saturn. He is in Sade Sati. Um, I haven't studied his other planets and his other transits and all that kind of thing, but uh, I, Mars is in a good spot. That's what I'm saying. So I, I actually don't have too many worries there. I think I had a look at the United States chart. There's a time that's floating around the United States that all the astrologers seem to use. So I use that. I plugged it in. I had a look at what's going on for the United States and Mars is going to be 12th from the moon, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, I mean, I can see that the people are unsettled. It, it's an uncomfortable time. It's very much the unknown. Sure, I, I, that, that makes perfect sense. But I I don't know. I, I don't feel like there's anything uh, too too great to be worried about there. Uh, here in the United Kingdom, the news topic that I wanted to focus on was the backlash on Alfie Days. So yes, I'm featuring a young vlogger. By the way, I thought this was a cool little news article. Um, I think it was a week or two ago. I had one of my viewers send me an email with a question. One of my viewers who is 14 years old. Hello, I was delighted to receive your email and I hope you're watching today. Um, how cool, how cool is that? I have some young people in the audience. I think that's absolutely wonderful. And so, yeah, this Alfie Day's bit of news, you know, it's, that's, that's uh, his audience is kind of that teenage group, really. So how exciting is that? So maybe you know, you should check out this Alfie Days guy. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to have a look at this because poor guy, he's just this young vlogger. He does these fun vlogs every day, a daily vlogger. He takes his camera around everywhere and he's like, this is my day. And recently he did this challenge. I'm going to see if I can spend a pound in a day. I'm going to see how hard that is. So I'm going to spend, and so my budget for food and drink is going to be one pound. That was the challenge. So he, he goes off into town and he ends up getting free Krispy Kreme donuts. And I, I actually watched it before the backlash happened. 
and um and it's incredible this backlash so yeah him spending a pound per day got i think it got seven hundred thousand views got a heck of a lot of views because what happened was he ends up like hopping in his luxury land rover to you know go and look for food and it, it, it was just kind of it was a bit ridiculous um even when I was kind of watching it, you know, a couple of little question marks did, did pop up in my mind. But then I'm not in that age group. I'm not, you know, I'm watching vloggers out of research, out of market research, you know. So <laughs> I'm uh, a very different viewer. So, but all the young people who watch him were kind of like, you know, what's going on with this video? And there was a huge backlash, huge backlash. It was like the whole world just pounced on him. And I definitely think that was a Ketu Mars uh, thing there, absolutely. The poor guy, he just innocently put something out into the world that he thought was just nice and fun and easy. And he's putting up a vlog every single day. He's been doing it for like six years, 10 years, however long, I don't know, a long time. Very experienced at this. And this is the first time that kind of like the, the media, like the Times, the Independent, the BBC, everybody, everybody just pounced on him. They just all attacked him. And, you know, um, yeah, this is where I've got the note about people's power to be offended is at an all time high. So this is where I was talking about Mars and Ketu together, this energy where it's like, I wouldn't want to fight that person. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, who don't you want to fight? And you don't want to fight someone who's really legitimately in the right very often that's the victim but is it good to be in victim energy and that's the thing no it isn't you know that's not good it's it's not good to be a victim there is power in being a victim okay so these are all the things that when Mars and Ketu are together we need to be thinking about we need to be thinking about how we use this power so that's what how I'm going to sum up this month of July um you know, by looking at those three news items that happened last month, uh, I'm coming to this conclusion that this July and, and for the next two months, really, um, we need to be careful of how we use our power. We have to be careful of watching, you know, are we in the victim uh, end of the spectrum? And if we are, are we tempted to use that? Are we using it fairly? Are we using it unfairly? Are we using it as a weapon? You know, are we using our poor me position to really attack somebody? You know, that's that's possible here. And that's what people did with that Alfie Days video. I think that's a really good example of this energy. And it's happened just like a week or two ago. It's fresh. And, you know, people got so offended. They were like, oh, how dare you talk about, you know, doing your food for a pound in a day when you drive around in your fancy Land Rover. I mean, people went bonkers. And, you know, I mean, I watched it. I was pretty neutral through the whole thing. But then, I mean, I've done a lot of spiritual work. So <laughs> so I'm pretty neutral about most things. Um, you know, and I know the importance of being in neutral. I tell you, it's just, um, it's essential. And if you've got a lot of people around you doing the same energy towards you, that's, you then have to, you know, do something to come back into neutral. That's giving you a sign. So let's say, so I've definitely gone through that. I put my hand up for the narc empath, narcissist empath dynamic. I've been in that. And I mean, I've been the empath and I'm too nice and I'm, you know, too accommodating and, and whatever. And, and yes, you will attract people who will keep testing that until you stand up for yourself. Sometimes you need to tap into your own power. Sometimes you actually need to have a bit of bite. Sometimes you actually need to be a little bit aggressive. You know, so this Mars K2 period might be asking that of you. It Sorry about that, the camera just cut out. It seems to do that at around the 24 minute mark. It's doing that constantly. So I don't know, I need to get a new one or get this one fixed. I don't know. I'll retrograde, <laughs> retrograde, review, revise, renegotiate, re something or other. You know, that's always the classic standard thing. Re 
emptying your hard drive and getting a little disk is full message. Oh. Um, actually, that is a problem with the sound. Uh, so let me just... Um, Oh, do you know what? I think it should be all right. I'm not going to talk for too long anyway. I, I lost my train of thought. I was probably talking about victim power. Uh, I was probably talking about the power to be offended and how, um, you know, this is, this is something that over the next couple of months we really just want to watch within ourselves. We just really want to watch within ourselves how we use our power, what aggression is in our lives. Um, you know, can we increase the space before we react? That's a really great thing to do. Uh, you know, there's knee-jerk reactions. How about embedding more space in before you, you react? And by watching astrology videos like this, you are actually increasing your awareness. You're increasing that space within yourself. You will be able to respond as opposed to react. You'll be able to respond in a more conscious manner. Um, and, you know, as Jordan Peterson says, you'll, you'll be more useful. He's all about utility and, and our usefulness. So, you know, instead of being a drain or being a drag, you'll be that person who's got space and will be very useful and helpful and all that kind of thing. Uh, there are a couple of quick notes. I think I really had, have gone through everything that I wanted to. I'm just going to be super quick and go through a couple of things. Let's not forget that Mars is exalted. So Mars is not a great big scary beast. It, you know, Mars is wonderful. And Mars is courage and Mars is um, its passion as well. And it's our physicality also. You know, this is a great time to be investing in your physical body. Great time to start a physical routine or regime of some kind. I have, when Mars came into this position and became exalted and all this stuff I actually started up my exercise routine which is very very simple I do the Tibetan yoga exercises uh, I think it's called is it Tibetan yoga I'm pretty sure it's called Tibetan yoga they're the five rites and I do I don't do the full five rites you're supposed to do 21 of each of the five and I I do 10 but like <laughs> But I do them and I do them every day. And I think so far I've been doing it a few weeks and I've missed one day or something like that. For me, that's absolutely amazing. And it doesn't take very long. I break it into two. So I do five little goes of it in the morning. It takes about 10 minutes before my shower and then I do five at night. Perfect. You know, it takes 10 minutes, night and day, and that's it. It's done. So what is some kind of 10 minute exercise regime you can start? even five minutes. When I was working and I found it really hard to exercise every day, I would do a two minute plank every day when I got home and that was my workout. And you know what? Sometimes that's all you've got time for and, and sometimes that's what it is. So it's a great time to get in shape or do some exercise or even just breathing exercises. You know, there are terrific breathing exercises that you can do that are just wonderful. And if you master your breath, you master your life, definitely. Uh, I also wanted to just mention very quickly, we always talk about Ketu and Mars together. Yes, it's very exciting. Yes, that's the main story going on here. But let's not forget about Rahu. What's going on on the other side? Mercury. Mercury is hanging out with Rahu all month in July. And I actually think this is going to be a nice stabilizing energy for all of us. Uh, Mercury is it our intelligence. It's our logic. Uh, it's our communication. And Mercury is very happy in the fourth house, very happy in Cancer. So I think that we've got a nice balance going on here. Mercury is going retrograde. And I actually think that's a great thing because then Mercury... You know, I was looking at it in the charts when I was doing all the little mini readings. He kind of, he's just about to go out of the fourth house and then he just bounces back in. I actually kind of like that. I, I don't think, you know, retrograde is nothing to be nervous about or feel bad about or, oh, it's scary or, uh, I don't think so. It's, to me, the, the energy is just more powerful. That's definitely what I get from it. And the fact is the earth is moving faster. So... You know, that's why there's kind of review or things happening twice or renegotiating or that kind of thing. Sure, that kind of thing does happen. So I'm going to wish you a terrific July. I hope you have enjoyed this um, overview. And 
you know, you can watch your mini reading part one, part two, and just go into the description. I've got all the little jump links there, so you don't have to listen to everyone else's sign. You can just click on your sign and just watch your bit and then be on with your day. But I really hope you have a great July. I hope there's time within this month for you to get away from it all, to find space, to contemplate some things, and definitely some good things to be complex. Uh, contemplating uh, say for example your purpose your meaning uh, where, where you get meaning from in life um, your legacy these are good things to think about uh, and um, and your power how you use your power so thank you so much for stopping by thank you so much for subscribing I just know that I've got the best subscribers in the world uh, I think a really lovely little community is building here and I'm just so proud to be part of it so thank you so much for all of your support and feel free to share this video and I will see you next time